Doncs, molt bon dia a tots i totes. Aquesta és una sessió diferent de les que fem a Media a Media Catalunya, a Europa Creativa Desk Media Catalunya, perquè és la joint venture aquí i allà que fem amb Catalan Films, que sempre és molt productiu, perquè Catalan Films som nosaltres i nosaltres som Catalan Films, però per al departament, les companyes, la Patricia, la Mar i el seu equip. I és la segona edició, i és molt divertit que us expliqui que això és com el Fast and the Furious 2, on tot el cast i el crew l'han canviat, no té res a veure amb el primer, perquè l'any passat vam fer aquesta sessió, el propòsit de la sessió, que us diu el programa, és apropar-vos al London Finance Market i tenir més entresijos, no sé el català, més pistes de com funciona per dintre, animar-vos a que us presenteu amb les seves dobles línies, el normal i el mini market, que és l'interessant pels microbudgets, i ho hem fet l'any passat. El que passa és que l'any passat, per motius, ni la Mar Medir, Catalan Films, ni Àlex Navarro, Europa Creativa, ni Elena Mackenzie, la responsable, que ara us la presentarem tot seguit, vam poder venir i vam venir els no els suplentes, perquè eren igual primera línia, però clar, era un altre equip i per tant també debutem amb aquesta sessió. Si vosaltres veu venir l'any passat, estupendo, en prendreu més, perquè tenim dos study cases que portaran més llum sobre les possibilitats de participar d'aquest mercat i si no heu vingut, primera vegada com nosaltres, doncs benvinguts. Dit aquesta intro, ara sí. Elena, welcome to Barcelona. It's been, as I said, it's like Fast and the Furious 2. Yeah. It's a kind of a sequel, brand new cast, brand new <laughs> producing team for this wonderful cooperation session with Catalan Films. And um, let me pres um, introduce Elena McKenzie. is la cap d'inversions exteriors i desenvolupament de negocis al, al film London. El, el, sabeu que aquest mercat està attached dins del festival i que, a més, té suport media. Elena, thanks for being so nice. Second year, this time for sure, for personal reasons. Unfortunately, either you and I, we could stay and be with, with um, our producers last year. Um, the floor is yours. Um, it's, uh, we have like, we're gonna do the session in terms of presentation of the market with a PowerPoint. Please feel free to ask questions to Elena. And then uh, we're gonna receive uh, later on uh, Valerie and uh, Sergi, as exactly as in the program to get more uh, details regarding study cases. So uh, nice okay. to have you here. Thank you. And go ahead. Okay. So thank you everybody for coming. Um, and um, as Alex said, my name is Helena McKenzie and I'm working at Film London and I run the production finance market. I'd like to thank Alex and your team and Ma and her team for putting this together uh, today. So um, I'm going to do a presentation to you today on uh, the production finance market. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the micro market, which is kind of like the little sister of uh, the production finance market, um, which is for more lower budget films. But the main presentation is going to be on the production finance market or PFM as, as, we, as we call it. The one thing I say to everybody is make a note of the date because this is the date of the finance market. And I can't tell you how many times we have selected people to um, attend the market and then three weeks before the date they say, oh, I can't come because it's a school holiday or Auntie Mary is getting married or something or other, I don't know. But there's a, So it's very important that you note the date because if, um, if you can't do the date, then um, there's kind of no point in applying. <laughs> But these are the dates of the uh, of the production finance market. I have to say that, unfortunately, for agenda reasons, because uh, during uh, that period of time, usually we have coming back from the MIP, and as well I have CGS Film Festival, and ah. as well I have one one thing in my agenda. It's mandatory. It's MediMed, the the, the market um, yep. the documentary market from the Mediterranean. So quite, I would love to be there as an observer or whatever. I mean, to, fi to have the feeling. Yes. But because I've never been there, probably my questions are going to be slightly naive. Okay. But if, let's say that I'm a producer, I want to be there first time, yeah. which is the deadline I have to put in my calendar to be sure that the project is going to be considered and on time to be selected and to be on the 9th, 11th October. So the, um, the applications will, the application call goes out in May. Um, the deadline is early July. We make a decision, we read all the application through the summer and we let everybody know by the end of August or beginning of September. 
And then you have from then, so say uh, the last week of August until uh, early, uh, early um, until the 9th of October to finalize all the, uh, and to prepare Full your pitching. And, and yeah, and amend, uh, add, etc. Exactly. So uh, May it's important and... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so let's, uh, let's let have a little look about what the actual market is, how it looks. Basically, it is, uh, it's a two-day event, and uh, it is mainly sort of this sort of speed dating kind of event, which I think most people are now uh, quite familiar with in terms of you have, you know, 25-minute meetings, a bell rings, and then you go to your next meeting, and 25 minutes later, the bell rings again, and you go to your next one. So, essentially, it's two days of that. However, there are also panels and there's also a keynote speaker and there are other events that happen. But essentially, that is what you're signing up to. That is what we are um, giving you the opportunity to participate in. We're looking for producers um, with uh, projects that are packaged so that they have been developed in some way. So we're not looking at um, projects that are at their very, very early stage so with some attachments to them. Um, it is a finance market, and I'd like to make this point quite clear. It's not a co-production market, okay? So we've been doing this for 11 years. This is the 11th year we're doing it. And when um, my company, Film London, when we decided we wanted to do something like this, we looked at doing a co-production market, but actually we decided not to because there are so many of them, all really good, they all provide a fantastic service, but there's very few that actually focus on the financing. Um, they really are co-production markets about finding a co-producer. So this is not about finding a co-producer, this is about finding money. If you happen to meet somebody, which you may well do, during the course of the two days that might become a co-producer, then that's a bonus, but this is a finance market. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing. Uh, we have around, 50 to 60 producers and a similar amount of, of um, financiers. And because the production finance market is funded by, um, well, one of our funders is Creative Europe, um, we are obliged to make sure that of the 50 to 60 producers that we select, 50% of them will be from mainland Europe. So that means 25 to 30 producers are going to be coming from Spain, France, Germany, Eastern Europe, wherever, Italy, blah, blah, blah. So the rest will be coming from the rest of the world. And we'll talk about where they come from and who they are later. But it is a very, very, the very international market. It's not UK centric. It is not a UK thing. It is very, very international. And what we do with the 50 or 60 producers, we will do your meeting schedule for you and basically we organize in the region of 1100 between 1000 and 1200 meetings over two days so it's very intense and my advice is to bring some throat sweets with you because you will lose your voice by the end of the two days so we set it in London uh, it's uh, you know we are film London after all so uh, we set it in London but we don't set it in the west end of London which is probably the London that you know we set it in the city because this is the financial heart of the of, of London so we feel it's more appropriate for a finance market to be set in the city of London so it's an area that you might not know but it's in a hotel it takes everything takes place in the hotel so you stay at the hotel and you operate the, we operate the market in the hotel. So it's very, very convenient. So once you arrive with us, it's very, very easy for you to, to, to work in the, within those two days. I mean, we make it very convenient. Uh, so the previous keynote speakers that we've had, um, so the first day, for instance, you will start off with a keynote speaker. We don't yet know who it's gonna be. We haven't selected anybody yet. But last year we had Danny Perkins, for instance, who is the managing director of Studio Canal. So he was talking about his, uh, his company and how, you know, their productions and their distribution and how he became to become managing director of Studio Canal, which is you know, one of the biggest production companies in the UK and in, and in France. So the financiers that attend, 
We have a real sort of broad range of, of, of financiers. There's not any one single type of finance. So it makes it more interesting for you to come and meet all the different types of people. All the financiers that come will be established. They won't be new. And if they are a little bit new, they will have been fully checked by us because we do understand that sometimes people can say they can deliver kind of finance and then they often can't. So, um, so we make sure that they are fully checked. But they will be established people and they will be very of a very high caliber, very, you know, very credible people. These are the sort of people that it might be quite difficult for you to be in front of um, without coming to a market like, like, like this. So you're having access to people that would normally be quite difficult to get hold of. We have various funds, whether they are from UK or Europe. Um, some of those funds would be regional funds. So, for instance, you know, then that, that might mean that you're obviously, you know, getting their funding if you shoot in their region. But some of them are a little bit more flexible. Um, we have some private equity funds and we have, you know, com big companies like Ingenious and those kind of com companies that actually do provide um, equity and hedge funds. Um, there aren't too many banks working in the financing sector anymore, but those that are, we, um, we um, in, invite to come, and they are often from, um, mainly from Europe, so they're from the UK or from, or from France or from Brussels or from these kind of areas. Um, the screen agencies, again, we will have screen agencies from the UK, quite a lot from the UK in terms of somebody from Wales might come, someone from Scotland might come. But also we have other screen agencies from, again, from, from Europe. But sometimes these, again, these funds are um, often limited to you, to you shooting there. So it kind of depends on whether you are doing a co-production with that region. We do have a lot of sales companies come, and this is a this is an area which you know the sales the sales companies can be very closed, and if you don't know who they are or you don't know them personally, it's sometimes very difficult to get in front of a sales company. Uh, I know I used to be one, so um, I kind of understand that process. So um, this isn't this this is the the main. As I suppose so is we get more applications from sales companies to come to this market than any other form of finance. And we have to turn away more sales companies than any other form of finance. So, and that's not because they're no good. It's because we just need to make sure there is a good, uh, say, broad selection of, um, of financiers for you. We don't want it to be overly uh, heavy with, 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 with sales. But there is an opportunity for sales companies to come to another part of the event, which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, so you'll get a lot of sales companies there. They will be UK, but they will also be from Europe as well. Um, and also we get distributors. So um, various distributors, international distributors will, will, will come. So from a producer point of view, uh, as I say, we look, um, we look at uh, all the um, all the, all the applications um, and we make sure that we have a very international spread of producers that come. Uh, the producers that come will be established producers to the production finance market. They will have already produced um, a feature film of some kind or maybe two. So we can, so we know that they know how to handle a budget, they know how to deliver on time, they understand the, the, the financing um, methods and uh, in terms of you know sales and distribution, so it's somebody that is not uh, an emerging producer. And again, so just to reiterate, this is not a co-production market. We, this is a finance market. So the producers that come are looking for finance. What we're looking for um, is, I mean, everyone says this. Everyone wants to have you know, a project that's going to be commercially viable and it's going to be theatrical. Every producer, there's not one producer I've met in my entire life that doesn't think their film is theatrical. They all think their film is theatrical, but mostly they're not, actually. And um, you know, sometimes it's very, very difficult to get the films released um, in your own territory, let, let alone internationally. But we do look at projects that, you know, with an eye for looking for something that we feel could have a chance out there in this very difficult market that we work in. Um, the project needs to have a completed script and it needs to be at a well-developed draft. 
but it doesn't need, we don't need the script for the application, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but, um, but it does need to have a script, because at some point, you're going to have to give the script to somebody to read. You're going to have to give the script to a financier that might be interested. They're going to have to read it at some point. So you do need to have a developed, um, a developed draft of a script. You also need to have a director attached to this project. No financier, no good financier is going to finance anything that hasn't got a director attached to it. It's just impossible. They're just not interested. So you've got to have a director attached. Um, we're also looking for uh, a well thought out finance plan. So that is not a piece of paper which says a pre-sale in Germany and um, a broadcaster from RTV or something like that. That's not good enough. It needs to be really where you're going to get this money from uh, so that we can see that you've thought about it, that you've understood, that you understand kind of where your avenues are for finance. And, um, and also possibly, you know, with a plan B, if, uh, if plan A doesn't quite materialize, which often happens. So there needs to be a good finance plan. The budget needs to be realistic as well. I mean, it, you know, we don't need to have the budget, but it would be good to, it would be good to include that in the application. And where we say two lead actors, we don't need the two lead actors, but it's a good idea if you have an idea of who it is that you're looking at casting it gives us it gives us the idea of kind of what level you're working at but they don't need to be signed up they don't even need to have a letter of intent it just we just need to see whether you're working you know the sort of the casting that you're looking for um, so that we can also because that will that needs to correlate with the budget as well because if you're looking at having major actors in it and yet your budget doesn't reflect that then we would think that you probably haven't thought about this properly. So those are the things that we generally need. Uh, with the production finance market, we're looking at projects that have a budget of a million euros or above. Now this used to be, we, our budget level used to be higher than this, but um, a number of years ago we took it down to be more realistic, particularly with European productions. Um, so, um, so we feel this is a more realistic production uh, level to be working at. Um, and Anything under a million would be, we would be looking at that for our, our sister event called Micro Market. So, um, but we can come, we can come to that in a minute. Um, it's a, it's a good idea if you've got a slate of films, that's going to help as well your application because we feel that you should, you apply with one project. But if you've got other ones that you're also developing, this is great. And that should form part of your application so we can see that you've got these in the background. Because what will happen is that you might be having your meeting with your financier and they might decide fairly quickly in five or ten minutes that they're not that interested actually in this particular project. And so you can switch very quickly that, okay, well, here's... Here's another one that I have, you know, and because you, so, you've got 25 minutes with these people, it's best to use your time as effectively as possible. So if you've got a couple of other films that are on your slate, then that will be um, a good advantage to you um, when you're applying, um, applying for us to read. So going back to, um, to what you need for the application, we've talked about director and cast. Now, we need 30% of the budget to be in place. Now, it doesn't need to be money in the bank. You don't need to show us your bank statements that says you've got 30% of the budget. What it does need to be, um, it, what we would like to see would be letters of intent from, um, for, from some financiers. It might be that you've got a sales company. That will definitely help you. If you've already got a sales company, that would really help. But your 30% can be made up from subsidies. So, for instance, if you were doing a UK-Spanish um, co-production and you were using the tax credit in the UK, then that accounts for about 25%. So we would take that, and that is good enough for us. So actually, we have found over the years of doing this that it's not too difficult, on paper anyway, to come to 25 30%. This is not an unreasonable um, percentage to ask for and actually quite a few um, other events of similar nature will ask for a similar kind of figure so it's not too difficult to get to and we would be flexible on this if you've got 
20, 25 percent in place, but you've got lots of other of the elements packaged and the package looks really nice. We would consider that. We, we, we will be flexible on that. But um, you can't really apply with zero percent in place. It just, it's, well, we're going to look at it and we're going to put it to one side. We're just not going to read it. So um, uh, other supporting material, um, I would say um, with your cast ideas with your you know director you know directors um synopses long synopsis short synopsis director statement um biographies producer biographies all of this kind of stuff which is all in the application anyway some people um like to put um like a storyboard or something which shows mood board something which shows how the film could look um, that's fine, that's great. I mean, anything that helps your application that you think is going to help your application is good for us. We get about 180 applications for 50 to 60 places, of which, say, 25 to 30 of them are going to be European. So, you know, you need to make your application stand out. So as well as having the criteria that we need, anything that you think that's going to help that shows that you've put some thought and effort into not only the application, but the project itself, that's going to that's going to really help. Um, we don't need a script, as I said. Um, we just simply, between early July and the end of August, and 180 applications, we simply don't have the time to read the scripts. And so, um, and actually, because it's a finance market, this is much more of a commercial and business market. Um, it's not, we're not looking at it that much from a creative point of view. We are simply looking at the financial elements. So we don't need a script, but as I said, you do need to have one. And it needs to be developed. And I would say that when you apply, your covering letter should say that you were here today and that you, were, that you came to this and that, you know, we met and that, you know, all of that helps. I mean, drop my name wherever possible. <laughs> I'm also one of the readers. <laughs> um, the most important thing that I want to say as well is that this is not... Uh, my job at Film London, apart from doing things like the PFM, my job at Lond uh, Film London is to attract um, productions to come and shoot in London. This is nothing to do with that. So this, this your, your project does not need to be in English, and it does not need to be shot in England or the UK, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, whatever. It, it, it can be entirely Spanish, shot in Spain, shot anywhere. It can be, you know, a Spanish and German co-production. It could be a Spanish and Argentinian co-production. It can be a whatever. It, it really doesn't need to be in England or in English at all. And um, it, the idea that we do this market is to oil the wheels of production internationally. And this is not about bringing stuff into the UK. We just, we, we just do it and we, we, we do the market in London, but it is not a, an inward investment thing for the UK. So, so please, please, you know, you won't, you won't be downgraded by having a, a non-English speaking um, production at all. In fact, quite the opposite. Uh, I think that's it from that. Um, so going back to um, the dates again, um, just make sure that you are free on those dates because as I said, we've done this before many times and people suddenly realize they can't come and that's very unfortunate. And when they let you know two weeks before the event, it kind of upsets the whole schedule and, and everything. So. Um, so you will be, if you, if you are selected, um, you will be given a, a schedule of meetings, which we will do for you, bearing in mind that we know who the financiers are, we know your project, and so what we will do, well, we will do our best to match you with people that we think will be suitable and appropriate and helpful uh, for you and the project. And it will be a cross-section of the financiers that come to the market. We will also put you with people that you think you don't want to meet because this happens actually a lot when you think you don't want to meet someone and those meetings are often the best meetings that you have because you're finding out about each other they're finding out about you, you're finding out about them. It might be that for this project it's not right but for future projects or it might be for something else completely 
Um, but it's important for you. This is a networking event too. This is important for you to meet people. You got you're there for two days, and and we want to make sure your time is used most appropriately. And so it's great for you just to meet these people because they will at some point be of use to you. I'm sure. You also have a chance to um, to choose. We will give you a list of the financiers that are attending, and you can choose um, up to five uh, people that you definitely want to meet. And we. We want to make sure that we do our best to, for you to see those people as well. So you do get some say in it, but you will, you will get a list of meetings and you'll think, why the hell are they, am I meeting this company? But often they, they do work out to be uh, very good meetings. Um, okay. Ah, oh, yes, this is... Uh, it's my little thing. I, I have made it my mission over the last few years to get as many Spanish companies, production companies, to come to the market as possible. It, it gives me an excuse to come to Spain a few times a year, which is always good. But, um, but actually, I genuinely believe there is an affinity between UK and Spain. I think there is a, there is a beating heart between the two countries um, with storytelling that really resonates. And so I think it's a really good opportunity for Spain and, 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 and the UK to work more closely together. So, um, so I do come and bang the drum here in Barcelona and Madrid. And, and actually on Monday, I was in Malaga too to speak to Andalusian producers. But genuine, because I genuinely believe that there, is, there are opportunities from a creative storytelling point of view. So we have had 11 Spanish feature films um, which have been presented at the, at the PFM um, that have received some kind of finance that have been completed. Now, we've been doing this event. This will be our 11th year. The first two years we did were very um, sort of, well, the first year was completely UK. The second year we started to reach out a little bit to Europe. Um, so really and truly, we've only been doing eight editions with a bigger European um, attendance. So to have 11 Spanish feature films going through over eight years, I think that's a terrific achievement. I'm very proud of it but I'd want it to be uh, more. Uh, and in fact, actually, um, uh, yesterday in Madrid, did I just know? Yeah, yesterday in Madrid, um, the, the other speaker that I had with me, um, the producer of which, uh, of a film called Amar, which is now being released uh, in Spain. Um, so she brought that to the market last year. So, um, so she was a great opportunity, you know, it was great to have her to speak about her experiences. Um, I mean, I can sit here and tell you how fabulous it is, but it's better to have somebody who's actually been. And I think we're actually going to have the opportunity later this morning, someone is uh, coming to talk about their experiences. But uh, so anyway, so we've had 11 Spanish feature films. I want there to be more. I want one of you, some of you guys in this room to up that figure, if you don't mind. So... Um, so every year we do an evaluation um, and um, we, uh, we get the feedback from everybody who attended, from financiers and from producers. So um, these are the percentages uh, that we've had from the financiers. Um, and as I say, 97.5 financiers will return to the market. I'm curious to know who the 2.5% of financiers that didn't like it. I want to know who they are and why. Because... Um, I want that figure to be 97.5, I'm very happy with, but I want it to be 100%. But, um, but this just gives you an idea of the kind of feedback that we get um, from the financiers. Uh, and similarly, um, with the producers um, from last year as well. So, um, so they're all, you know, they're all, they're all, there's always ways that we can make this better. You know, we've, you know every year we want to improve it. Every year we want to tweak it a little bit to make sure that it's a, a, better, a, a better event. But I think that, you know, we're doing, we're doing pretty well. And here are some projects that have come through um, the, the production finance market um, over the years. I mean, it gives you an idea of the kind of... Um, international and European um, quality and, uh, and breadth that, that we are working with. So, and it, again, it just emphasizes that this is not necessarily an English language market. It's, it's certainly not a UK centric, you know, a British film thing. Um, it's not a US thing. You know, it's very, very international. So being very international, we work with international partners. 
So these are our sort of official partners that we're working with. So, for instance, the top one, when, it's, when East meets West. I don't know how many. Has any of you been to When East Meets West before? It's in the Trieste Film Festival. Well done, Ma. Well done, Ma. <laughs> we are cheating, Ma. Uh, just to do a pop-up publicity. Ma and, and I, again, another joint venture with Catalan Films and Media. Right. Yeah. With all the medias in Spain, I have to say, except for Spain. It was in Andalusia and País Vasco. And not, I mean, not, not Peter joined us this time. We were last year's special focus uh, for Spain in uh, Trieste. Right. Extremely well organized. Yeah. A, brilliant people. Uh, more oriented, I have to say, in the balance for documentary. But uh, really, exactly as they said, when East meets West. Yeah. So a good, a good pitching place. I remember we had uh, uh, some producers, Catalan there, isn't it, Mar? Uh, we had, uh, remember, uh, one, one project... Uh, Three, three projects, I, I, I don't, I don't trust me in my memory, but for sure, one uh, apadrinada por Isabel Cochet, the one for, for Carla Sospedra, was there with Liliana Torres, they had the chance to pitch. Um, and different sections, we had other, 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 other people. And the mission was brilliant. We were really happy of working with Alessandro. Oh, yeah, of course, we had to be there because it's a special focus. for. Yeah. Um, and we got advantage because not being in Spain, like, I mean, uh, Spain, but not representing like the major Spanish, yeah. uh, the Basque people, the Andalusian, and the Catalan. We took advantage of that. Right. We did it as well with our colleagues in Portugal because it was a kind of a, a peninsula oriented that year. <laughs> and uh, I remember that even Mar was uh, in a round table yeah. with um, how to get finance um, in South America with different uh, right. stakeholders. It was great. Just to pop, hey, close the pop up. I they don't want are. to interrupt, but just to give you. Yeah. Light that everything is connected yes. in the media family. Don't forget <laughs> the principle. Yeah. What she, Elena is telling you goes al very, very uh, in parallel as what the media development call of support is requesting you sooner or later. Yeah. So. so the reason that, yeah, the re as Alex said, the reason that we have a partnership with When East Meets West is because there's a lot of Eastern European producers that go there because of where it's geographically located so for us it's a really fantastic place to go and meet with eastern european projects um or producers and and look at and look at their projects so we participate in the co-production market there and actually what we did we we teamed up with um when east meets west and with you'll see the rome film festival new cinema network so we actually started something um, last year was the first year we did it. It's called TRL Espresso, which stands for Trieste Roma London Espresso, like a fast track. So we will select some A1 project from Trieste who will come from Eastern European, uh, an Eastern European territory. And they will be fast tracked to London and to the Rome um, co-production market. So it's an, a fantastic opportunity for them. And actually, the film, the project that we selected last year, we are doing a presentation, a case study in Cannes at the film festival coming up, um, in the Italian Pavilion, to explain that initiative and what has happened to this film and what they've got in terms of their finance because they have become now fully funded as a result of being in Trieste and Rome and London. So it's a great, it's a great opportunity um, for somebody there. So, but we go there in order to specifically um, select and get to meet um, Eastern European producers. Uh, we also work with 37 South, which is the finance market attached to Melbourne Film Festival, which means that basically we will be guaranteeing three places for either Australia or New Zealand producer to come. So um, so again, I, I go to 37 South every every year and I meet Australian and New Zealand producers and um, and we I select three. And those places are actually um, uh, funded, because it's such a long way to come, um, funded by um, either uh, film finances in Australia or the regional area which the producers have been um, selected from. So whether it's New South Wales or Victoria or New Zealand or whatever, they are funded to come. So it means that there are Australian and New Zealand producers there too. We work really closely with the Ile de France uh, Film Commission in Paris, and so they kind of act as a filter for us, for French producers, so we get a great selection of, uh, of French producers coming. Again, Rome, I've mentioned. Uh, we work also, we have a, an exchange with IF at TIFF, which is the International uh, Financing Forum at the Toronto Film Festival. So we will, we will send somebody over from 
um, from the PFM, and it doesn't have to be a UK person, it can be a Spanish person or anyone, but we, we, will, we will select a project that might be appropriate to be in, uh, in, the, uh, in Toronto, and they will send somebody over from, there, from Canada to come to us. Um, we also, we, um, we work with Scandinavia through Haugesen, uh, through the, um, through the Haugesen Film, Film Festival again, because there's a good concentration of Scandinavian producers there, so we meet with them. Um, we're starting to work more with the German funds, and um, so they will come not only as a financier, some of them, but um, they will also like with Ile de France, they act as a filter, and they kind of saw they certainly um, recommend producers for us. And then more recently, and this is kind of very new news because we haven't actually announced this, we're going to be announcing this in Cannes, is that we are now working with Yave, which actually is the most extraordinary thing. I'd been in Trieste for the film festival to When East Meets West, and this year the territory focus was France. And I had to then, after... After Trieste, I had to go straight to Paris for a visual effects conference, which we were involved with. So I flew from Venice to, um, to Paris, and sat next to me was uh, Christina Trapp, who is the chief executive of Viave. So we were like, oh, hi. We should be working together. Yeah, we should. Let's do it. So we came up with the hour, in the hour and a half that it took to fly from Venice to Paris. We came up with this idea. So, um, so we now have a new uh, initiative uh, with Yave. So I will be attending Yave uh, in the October edition uh, in uh, Copenhagen, I think, where we will be selecting um, some projects from Yave to come to the PFM next year. So that's another, as you say, these collaborations, you know, they all... Another, mm. another pop-up, uh, Sergio um, Lastor Media, que després estarà amb nosaltres, uh, ell també ha participat a EAVE i li podem treure coses. I sé que algú de vosaltres igual també ha estat, però és absolutament en la carrera de media, i jo crec que us ho diria que si el projecte ho mereix, estratègicament és una joint venture excel·lent. No, I was saying that Sergio was studying case. Yeah, It's right. recently It's... been in EAVE, I remember, with the movie that have just finished, okay. as you like it. And he, we can ask some questions about it. Brilliant, and 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 the uh, it turned out that the pro the uh, the project that we selected from Trieste last year, the one that we're doing the case study in Cannes, that was a Iave developed project, and the project that I selected this year to come to this market is also an Iave producer. So there's lots of uh, things that we are doing. We have this. We have the same uh, me mentality, I guess. So um, so it's great to be working with Iave. Very pleased about that. And also, um, quite importantly, is Inca in Argentina because um, th they really want to work uh, with us uh, on the PFM because we don't really get very many Latin American um, producers coming because it's kind of a long way to come and uh, we've just never really found the appropriate partner to work with. So now we're working with Inca. Again, this is going to be announced in Cannes. So we're very happy about that and they will... Um, they will be recommending to us a number of um, producers which we will look at and we will, we, be, between us, we will select at least one to start with just to kind of get it going. But hopefully um, that might be of interest to you, I don't know, in terms of a language, I don't know whether that works with Spain um, particularly, but, um, but it's just nice for us to be able to have a partner in, um, in Latin America. Um, and also, uh, there's another um, smaller partnership which we just worked out with um, with Sardinia, but um, as well as uh, as as well as having a you know a great uh, relationship with you guys here in Barcelona, but um, we also work um, with in Spain with um, the Andalusian um, media desk and. Um, uh, uh, someone from the Hunda de Andalusia, the extender, and um, so for Andalusian producers. So that's worked out. And when I was in Malaga on Monday doing this, um, again, we had a case study from uh, a producer called Sarah Fio, who um, had a project in last year's PFM, and um, she talked about her experiences, and uh, she's now... Um, her project has been developed by another, you know, sort of 20 or 30 percent, and she's continuing to meet the people that she met last year's PFM. She's meeting them throughout the year, and she's meeting them in Cannes coming up. So, uh, so very, very happy with all these um, international relationships. So, just to um, reiterate the, uh, the the timings of everything here, um, to say. We're saying the 22nd of May. It might be the 
20th of May, it might be the 21st, but around, the, around that time in May, it's going to be announced during the, uh, the Cannes Film Festival for sure. Um, so keep a, an eye out for it. One other way, uh, other ways to, to, um, to know about the application is to follow us on Twitter, which is Film, Film London, to f uh, or Facebook, like us on Facebook, or sign up to our newsletter, because we'll be, all this information will be through, through there, or of course just, you know, contact me directly. But middle of May, or around about that time in May, we'll be announcing the call. Uh, then we will um, say we will read, uh, we will uh, wait until the early part of July for everyone to come in. The deadline is around about the 3rd or 4th of July. Then we will read them over the summer and the end of August, beginning of September, you will be informed. After then, it's a question of sort of weekly dialogue with you about your, uh, you know, your itinerary, your schedule and, and everything. And just to be also clear, we pay for the hotel. So there is a fee of £350. If you are selected, there's a fee of £350, which is approximately €400, Euros, something like this. Um, but, um, but, and you need to get to us. So we wouldn't provide anything for the flights. Some people, some producers that are selected... Um, are able to go to various um, regional screen agencies or whatever and get support for their flights. I don't know whether that's the case, but um, but we will pay for the hotel. But I think actually it's worth speaking to Catalan Film and TV because there is, um, I think, um, a relationship that we're working on with that. So, um, but Mark can give you more information on that. But basically, I think <laughs> she's looking at me. Good thing. <laughs> Um, but um, but basically we will look at we will we will pay for the hotel so and we will pay for all food and alcohol very important um, <laughs> so when you arrive if you are selected when you arrive you come to the hotel um, there will be in the first evening there is a, a networking op opportunity where we will be introducing you to the financiers in a more social environment before you actually sit in front of them so you can get to meet them first. The next, the first full day, there'll be the keynote speech, and then there'll be a panel probably, and then the rest of the time is the one-to-one -one meetings. Um, on the second evening, we have a much wider networking opportunity where about 250 people come, and these will be some of the people that didn't get, some of the financiers that didn't get selected. So you do get a chance to meet some of those other sales companies and, uh, and finance companies that weren't um, selected to come as an attendee. Um, and then the second day is all meetings again. So it's quite a full and intense time. Um, now, very briefly, what the micro, magic, micro market is, is for films that are under 1 million euros. This is, so our benchmark is 1 million euros. If you've got a project that is under 1 million euros in terms of its budget, then it's worth talking to us about micro market. Micro market happens at the same time as the production finance market in the same place. It is completely concurrent. So there's the same dates, everything. The difference with micro market is, apart from the budget levels, is it is more for emerging producers and it has much more of a sort of mentoring and training element attached to it. With the PFM, we're looking at established producers. So you don't need to have that training. You don't need to have that mentoring in the same way. But with micro market, it is there's a lot. It's, a, it's for a sort of say an emerging type of producer. Um, there is um, a mentoring sec um, a mentoring day which happens before the market, which would happen in London. But if you're not able to come to that, then I think they they do it through Skype or they they my colleagues that run micro market will be able to do some kind of mentoring with you, and I think that's over Skype or something like this. But, um, and then also with micro market, there are more panels that you, you, attend. you do have one-to-one -one meetings and you will have a lot of one-to-one -one meetings, but it is more um, sort of training and panels and information and that kind of thing rather than the kind of intensive one-to-one -one meeting situation is what you'll have at the PFM. Um, but, you know, they're all really good and the financiers will be different financiers to those at the PFM, one or two crossover, but mostly they are different because the financiers working in that space of under a million are often very different to those working over a million. 
Um, but because it happens at the same time in the same hotel, we coordinate everything together. So when there's a coffee break for PFM, there's a coffee break for Micromarket. When there's lunch for PFM, there's lunch for Micromarket in the same place and everyone comes down. Literally, PFM is on one floor and the micromarket is on another floor. And so when it's lunchtime, everyone comes down. So it, you get to meet, even if you're not meeting officially some of the PFM people, you will get to meet them anyway within those coffee breaks, tea breaks and lunch breaks. And I'm sure all of you know that often some of the best deals are done, you know, over a croissant or whatever, you know, you know, the, the deal memo is written on the back of a napkin. So, you know, it's kind of, you know, these are, it's really important that we kind of, we put everybody together at some point and all the networking events, so the, 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 well, the big networking event that happens when there's 250 people, that's everybody all together. So if you're looking at, if you've got a project with a budget of under a, under a million, then um, let me know and I'll pass you on to, um, on to my colleagues at Micromarket. Um, and also, if you do apply to PFM, just under a million. So some people will apply to the PFM as an aspiration, that they, but their budget might only be 800 or 900. So it's below the 1 million. We will consider that because actually what quite often happens is once you put fees in and stuff like that, sometimes the budget just will go over a million. So we will have a look at it. But if it really isn't a PFM project, we would, uh, but we feel really strongly about it. We feel that it's a great project, but it's just not quite right for PFM. We will, we will recommend it to, to Micromarket and pass it over to them, and then they will get in contact with you. So I think that's about it for me.